This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Okay, it's just Rick and I out on his boat this morning, and uh, if you look at the fish finder there, the blue screen, you can see that slope, and that's what we're fishing. Goes from uh, about 50 feet down to 100 feet, and rocky, all kinds of structure, current, and we're going to be fishing those big spoons, and uh, oh, there's going to be some good ones on this trip. And if you saw my previous spoon video, it's amazing, and that was my first trip with the spoons. This is only my second, and here we go. So... All right, I've got a malfunction here. The line is like wrapped uh, on the line guide. I am doing nothing, and a good bass grabs the spoon. Um, all right, we're, we're going to go from here. So this is Plum Gut off eastern Long Island, the general method to fish here because it's very strong currents, usually three to five miles an hour. Usually people use three-way rigs with heavy sinkers. Uh, somehow these big spoons do get to the bottom. This is a Tony Maha, nine-inch, five-ounce spoon. But we're going to compare this to uh, the Nichols, eight-inch, three-and-a-half-ounce spoon. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how that all plays out. Yeah, but I, I was having problems with my line when it hit. I don't know where in the water column I was. I mean, I my line was wrapped on the on the guide thing, on the line guide. Right. And uh, nonetheless. <laughs> oh, nice one. Yeah. Excellent. You want the net for that one? No, I got him. So, yeah, I basically wasn't even doing anything. I was trying to fix my line. Well, do that again. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way you catch fluke, you know? You got to get distracted right. doing something unrelated to fishing. Nice fish. That's a nice line, yeah. No? Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. All right, you want to get that spoon to the bottom. You want to watch that line carefully as it's falling. As soon as it hits bottom, just do this upward sweep and drop repetitively. And they love it. Got him. Good one. Good one. So the rods that Rick and I are using, these are the Dark Matter Skinner Jig and Bounce rods. I've been calling them the fluke rods because it's what we use for jigging fluke. But if you put a bigger reel on there with 30 pound braid, yeah, oh my I goodness, guess. you can do a yeah. lot with these rods. And uh, the previous spoon video, as yeah. this one will as well, will we'll show that. And uh, as of as I'm narrating this, these rods just went back into stock. We have a hard time keeping them in stock. They've become a little too popular at times. And you can get those at J&H Tackle. There's also um, a link in the video description. Oh! Oh, he just got off, huh? Yeah. All right. Was a nice bass, though. All right. Uh, yeah, dropped a fish there. Uh, Rick dropped a pair of fish uh, on consecutive drifts, and uh, he's going to hook up again here. Okay. There you go. That's And you're hooking up drift after drift now. I'm going to show you how to fish. Uh, yeah, how do you... Boat, how, right? Yeah, sure. Ah, uh, yeah. You drop it down, and you figure, okay, it should be... It should be around bottom now, yeah, and... Right. You do the bottom estimate uh, method. You know what might help we could try is when we set up on the drift, do a little like over reverse, you know what I mean? Like put the, get the boat yes, right. moving backwards right. on it as we drop and that will cut right. down on the initial scope in the deep water. Right. It's like the opposite of the boat moving forward. Right. Well, that's six drifts in a row hooking, hooking a fish. Well, that's got a little pull to it. Same thing with the shape itself. Yeah. Yep. 
Yay! Alright, another bad. Wow, the way it shakes like that, it's very it like a bat. You know? Yeah. Hey, if you bring it over, I'll, I'll grab it. Okay. Got it? Oh, <laughs> ah, perfect. Good. We'll take it. That counts. All right, I'm we'll coming up. <laughs> perfect. All right, you got your first spoon right. bass. So, let me uh, teach you how to use Okay, I'll be, I'm going to watch you more carefully <laughs> next drift. <laughs> okay, on the next drift here, yeah, Rick did do a little extra reverse, try to really... Uh, Kind of overcompensate trying to reduce the scope but that's have an interesting effect oh sometimes it just doesn't want to go you know same thing for me now i'm just like just hanging there yeah the yeah yeah so with that perfect dead stop and reducing belly on the line from the current running under underneath the boat um yeah the spoon just wants to flutter its way down and it'll just never get to the bottom 90 feet of water here um, so yeah, so what viewers have commented on, and is definitely the wow. case, is if you thumb the spool a little bit and get that spoon going vertically, falling to the bottom, um, it will stay vertical, it will slice through the water and get to the bottom faster. Otherwise, if it starts fluttering on the way down, it will just like never get down there. I'm like, oh, I want a fish. <laughs> Great. I thought it was the bottom. Oh, shit. I, I forgot to watch what you were doing. <laughs> so now I still don't know. Oh. Oh, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we're going to have to switch. Yeah, we have to change places here. Right. Yep. Oh. This has got to be a bluefish. No, nice bass. Yeah. There you go. All right, nice look at the spool rotating here. Um, that spoon really dropping nice and fast. Uh, you can't see my thumb, but I'm thumbing a little bit. Um, puts a little resistance on it, keeps it from fluttering. And uh, yeah, so I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm watching the spool, watching the line, and as soon as you see a little bit of slack indicating bottom, I'm gonna engage that reel, start those swoops. There we go. That's a bass. Nice. That's on the nickels, on the chartreuse oh, nickel okay. spoon. Yeah, that's got shoulders. Oh! oh. What a shame, that was a nice one. Come on, belted oh. it. And and I'm just guessing where bottom is at this point. Yeah, right, that's what I'm at. Oh! Nice one. Ah, there he is, there he is. Oh, I got hit a couple times on that. This is a nice one. Oh, and he's off! <laughs> Boy. So that's two good ones I've had on this spoon. Okay, and I've read how with these large spoons, uh, it makes perfect sense that these fish get leverage on the spoon and you tend to lose some. I did not experience that the first trip. 
Um, I'm experiencing it this trip. So both of those were on nickel spoons, by the way. I've switched now to a gold nickel spoon. I'm just trying some different things. I want to try some different colors, different brands. Get see it. what happens. I'm on. Feels good. So I've also read that some people will put a swivel down by the hook to try to reduce that torque and reduce lost fish. Um, so hey, you know, if viewers have any uh, comments, ideas on that, uh, I'm definitely open to that. Um, this is only my second trip with the spoons. Yeah, this is gonna be a good fish here. Right. Yeah, if I don't, if I don't lose them, yeah. Right. Okay, where are our lines in relation to each other? So I might be going over you. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that is the case. All right, so I'm gonna step. Yeah, I'm gonna step back. Okay, good. No, you're, I think you foul hooked the fish, which is what I did before. Yeah. Because you're, if you were, if you were on bottom, I'd be screeching out. Yeah. But you're actually stopped, right? Yeah. Now I'm stopped. All right. So if you're stopped, then. Yeah. I can't move this thing. Yeah, that's why I felt the last time. Maybe this is where the the 50 pounders are. Yeah, he's probably fouled and going funky in the current. And I've heard that's another feature of these spoons that they tend to foul hook fish. You know, they're big fluttering targets. They get hit funny. They've got that treble hook on there. Um, and I haven't heard of good success substituting singles on these spoons. Maybe people have other ideas, but that's what Rick's dealing with. Oh. Break the spoon? No. I oh, that's good. If you didn't break the spoon, no. you did okay. I think I have to throw the spoon, but the fish is off. Yeah, well, I don't think it was a legit hook, you know? Yeah, I don't think so either. That's exact. This, this is a nice bass. Because uh, that's what happens. Yeah. Pulling in that fish short side, forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Get this out of the way. You might be netting this one. I don't think he's a swinger. Uh. Come on. That's right, take your time. Yeah, this is where they get lost. Is they get yeah. the leverage on the spoon. Right. There you go. Oh, it's a big oh, whoa, bass. That's the whoa, biggest whoa. one we've had in the last two trips. Wow. Come on, get in there. Well, you... Huh. Holy shit. That's it. That's, That's it. You got him. All right, so look, wow. we're going to take him in real easy because... Oh, my camera battery died right there. But, okay, uh, yeah. Big fish. Um, he went just a tad over 40 pounds. And that one hit the gold nickel spoon, so, so far I've used uh, three different spoons, they're all catching. Okay, what's nice, the water temperature is only 62 degrees, um, so it's definitely going to be uh, a little easier to revive the fish, but we're going to drag them along slowly, make sure we get uh, water flowing over those gills. There he goes. All right, and the three spoons that I've used, uh, the white Maha, the 9-inch, and then a gold Nichols 8-inch, and a chartreuse Nichols 8-inch. I'm going to add one more spoon, and I'll, uh, I'll give a little summary at the end of uh, what the experience was of the different spoons.
You know, these when you're not dragging all that all that sinker weight around, they really come up yeah. higher, don't they? You know. Yeah. Uh, you, is that a real big one? No, it's a nice one. Okay. Yeah, that's a real nice one. You want me? You want the net? Um. You know, I'll, I'll deal with them. Somehow. Wow. <laughs> Somehow. Let me just get this up a little bit. And then yeah, then he decided, right? yeah. Yeah, boy, that's that's nothing to laugh at either, huh? Yeah. That, that's <laughs> a high <laughs> point, no? Yeah, it, it definitely is, yeah. Okay, thanks. Oh boy. Wow. That's a big fish. <laughs> it sure is. Alright, I'll deal with him. Go back up. Okay. There he goes. Whew. There he is. All right. Boy, coming up real fast. Look at the way that Yeah, it disturbs the whole parabolic bend. <laughs> I got real, this is like a porgy. <laughs> so when you're cranking on a fish, sometimes that, that spoon really kind of flutters and and vibrates the tip, so they feel like bluefish, but they're they're bass. Oh, like it's a little bass. It's not so little. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know it's like pretty close to slow. Oh, there you go. <laughs> See, now we could have been sitting out of Cartwright. Get, yeah. Oh, look at this one right next to him. Oh, nice one next to it, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one I'm up with. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice fish. Yeah. If, he had, if he had hung around, I would go drop a spoon on him. That's, uh... Oh, beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah, right on. Oh, there you go. All right. Taking line? Taking yeah, line? Taking line yeah. All right. All right, we used three different colors on this trip. Uh, white, chartreuse, gold, they all caught. Um, both the nickels and the mahas seemed to get through the water column down to the bottom at about the same speed. They both caught great. The one difference I saw, I seemed to lose more fish on the nickels, but come on, it's a small sample size. Don't want to draw any conclusions from that. Hey, thanks so much to Rick for uh, getting me out here, and this was a lot of fun. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And check out my online courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. A little pull to them. Yeah, definitely. Come up easier in the softer current. You know? Yes. Oh, yeah. Look at that Skinner rod. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> this rod can handle these fish. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, is that a big blue? No. Oh, bass. Nice, nice bass. bass. Nice yeah. bass. Wow. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let me uh let me take a crank here and Oh, okay. Oh, boy, that's a hell of a swing. Let me help you. Nice fish. Yeah, beautiful fish.